Hi, everyone. <clears throat> so we'll get started here. The so the online quiz, uh, I hope that everyone completed the online quiz or I know it's due. The online quiz is due January 22nd. So you have three more days and let me know if you need an extension or uh, if you can, uh, like if you need more time. And then so the online quiz is due in <clears throat> the online quiz will be due uh, in th the online quiz will be due January twenty second. So it will be due January twenty second, and then today we're going to do an in class assignment. So that'll be provided during the class uh not yet but i'll i'll go through it as we go on in the class and then next week will be the test so next week will be the test on what we've learned so far so including today we will so it will be based on the gross domestic product if, uh learnings the demand and supply <laughs> aggregate supply and demand and opportunity cost production possibilities. So that's that's what's on the uh, plan for today. And uh, yeah, as I'll introduce the in-class assignment as we go along, it won't be introduced until later in the class. So that, that's the plan for the for upcoming and the so we will start on our <clears throat> presentation it's going to be primarily on economic growth this today so So we're going to look at measuring GDP and economic growth today. So <clears throat> gross domestic product. So gross domestic product is the market value of all final goods and services produced within a country in a given time period. So it's only focused on final goods, not intermediate goods. So instead of measuring the metal used in production of a car would not be counted. The car would be what is counted. Not the components that make the car. So it measures the final products and services. So that's a very important point because, because if it measured the goods that go into making the products and services, there would be a lot of uh, double counting. So you'd be double counting a lot of things. So they measure GDP also with the circular flow of expenditure and income. So the products and so this is another term for the products and service transfer from households to firms. So that's circular flow. It shows how products and services are traded for money. So in this case, this is the Canadian economy in 2016. We had one point, so this is in billions of dollars so all of these amounts are in billions of dollars so for consumption it's uh 1.1830000 000 000 billion had so canadian and then investment would be 384 Billion CAD. Wait, so 
instead to make it easier, C equals. So the consumption would be 1.183 trillion, which is another word for, so which is the same as one, 1,183 billion. So it's the same thing there. And then I is 384 billion, and then G is 509 billion. And then X minus M is negative 48 billion. And then Y is GDP. And that's two, uh, 2,028 billion, which is the same as 2.028 trillion. And then C would be consumption spending. So uh, if you're purchasing goods and services, I is investment spending, investment in factories and machinery. G is government spending, government spending on healthcare, education, infrastructure, <laughs> infrastructure, CPP, EI, and other programs. And then X is exports and M is imports. And to get Y, which is GDP, we would add C, add I, add G, add exports, and subtract imports. So if we put all that in here, we would get this. So that, that's how <clears throat> that's how you do that there. The that's how you would uh, calculate the GDP. You'd add up all the components and uh, and add up C, I, G, X, and then subtract M, and then get two thousand twenty-eight. So then gross domestic product. The it's determined through adding up the consumption expenditures, investment, government expenditures, exports, and subtracting imports. <clears throat> so here's the equation y equals c plus i plus g plus x minus m. So capital stock is plant, equipment, buildings, and inventories used to produce goods and services. So that would be part of uh, I. Hmm. So investment is purchase of new capital. Depreciation is the decrease in value of a firm's capital because of wear and tear. Gross investment equals net investment plus replacing depreciated capital. And a capital stock is equal to net investment equal to gross investment minus depreciation. Sorry, what is capital? So capital means uh, it's any, that's what investment is. Capital stock would be the same as investment in this case. So in this case, we mean for capital, capital means plant, equipment, buildings, machinery, inventory, and property. So it's, it's all of those things here. And this is equivalent to investment. So when we talk about investment in this equation, investment doesn't refer to stocks and bonds. It is referred to as machinery, equipment, buildings, anything of capital stock. So that, that's what uh that's what capital stock is. It's the investment in this case. So you wouldn't include stocks or bonds into that because it's they're looking at physical capital. <clears throat> so in this case, the 
GDP is measured in two different ways. So the expenditure, so the expenditure approach is through doing the equation C plus I plus G plus X minus M. And then the income approach is when you add up all the incomes paid from firms to households. So net nest domestic income of factor cost equals wages, salaries, and supplementary income plus other factor income, profits plus investments such investment income plus farmer's income plus non-farm unincorporated business income. And then net domestic product and market prices would equal net domestic income plus direct, indirect taxes minus subsidies and then GDP equals net domestic product plus GDP depreciation. The expenditure approach is easier to use. So expenditure approach is easier to use for calculation than income approach. So in this case, uh, the expenditure approach, <clears throat> you add up all these things together, ex except for the, you subtract the uh, X one, you take away the X minus M. So you do 1,183. So you do the C plus I plus G plus X minus M equation uh, equals Y. So then Y equals 1,183 plus 384, plus 509, plus negative 48, and you get 2,028. And then if you did the percentage of GDP here, it'd be 58.3 plus 19.0 plus 25.1 plus negative 2.4, and then that equals 100. So you can do either way, like this is, this is how to do the expenditure approach. Is a lot easier than the income approach in terms of calculation. With the income approach, you would have to do a lot of a lot of calculations here. You'd have to wages, salaries, and supplementary labor income plus other factor incomes plus indirect taxes less subsidies plus depreciation equals gdp income approach so you'd have to add up add up this together then add this to what you got there and then add this to what you got before. So you'd have to add all four of those things together. So, so you'd add all four of those things together to get GDP income approach. And do you assume that depreciation is always negative? Like do you, the number that would be put here, if we were to add it up, the income approach, would be actually subtract depreciation? So, one second, I'm sorry. So, we have to add, we actually have to add depreciation back in this case. Okay. So you would add uh, depreciation because the reason why we add back depreciation, uh, and uh, this is important to know, is because depreciation is not a cash cost. It's, it's just an estimation by the company in terms of in terms of how much wear and tear has happened with the pro with the machinery in factories, et cetera. Okay. So they have to estimate something. And for any sort of income slash cash flow calculation, they for cash flow, they usually add it back. Um, so that, that's why they add it back because it's not a cash cost. 
Okay, thank you. But but good point bringing that up because uh, with uh, they add it back. The reason why is because you're not. It's not like you're paying for it. It's not like you're handing out money for that depreciation. It's just uh, estimation. Yeah. So here we would add up the one thousand five fifty one here plus three hundred ninety nine. Plus 227 plus 351. Then we get 2028 in billions of dollars. So, yeah, good point brought up there. And then measuring Canada's GDP, nominal GDP is the value of final goods and services produced in a given year, valued at that year's prices. And then real GDP is the value of final goods and services produced in a given year when you're given a base year. So we'll go through that. The real GDP is useful because we adjust for price changes. That's the benefit of real GDP. We adjust for price changes with real GDP. So for that, So we'll go through some examples of that in a bit. The uses and limitations of real GDP. So real GDP per person is a good uh, estimate of real GDP because it shows how, how the quality of life for each individual on average. It's more useful because, because we need to, we want to know how what the quality of life is per person. It's very difficult to figure that out if you're just looking at the whole economy. So looking at it at the at the personal level, it's a lot, it's a lot more useful for us. So here they, they usually measure potential it's a real GDP per person to show the standard of life. And over time in Canada, it's steadily it's increased a lot up until 1988. And then it's it's still increased after 1988, but it's still, it's increasing at a slower rate. But we always want real GDP per, per, per person to go up because that means that our economy for the average person is, is growing and their quality of life is getting better. And this shows, this Lucas wedge is what shows the slowdown of of real GDP growth. So this shows that the that we are that the real GDP per person growth has slowed down since the early 1980s in Canada. We estimated that based on the growth of real GDP per person from before 1980, the growth of real GDP per person would be a lot higher than it is now. So it slowed down a lot uh, here, and that's a concerning issue we have. So the uses and limitations of real GDP, so business cycles and fluctuations of the pace of expansion of real GDP. So each cycle is turning points, peak in a trough, and two phases of recession when GDP decreases for two or more consecutive quarters, and expansion when real GDP increases. So also real GDP per capita, it's hard to compare it internationally because of currency conversion. So in this case, the U.S. real GDP per person is 15 times that of China, just based on the market exchange rates. But the good thing, like something that you can use here is you can use, you can use purchasing power parity to, to compare real GDP per person more accurately. 
So using PVP, the US real GDP per person is only like this, this times China's. This times China's while if you just use market exchange rates, it'd be 15 times. So it's it's kind of it's half of what we thought it was, just based on using purchasing power parity. So we need to use purchasing power parity to make it to compare things more accurately. Yeah. Most can the most recent Canadian business cycle. So in 2008, there was a recession and the, the Canadian economy had negative real GDP growth. So like this, this, uh, this reduction here was because of the recession. And this was because of the housing crisis in the United States. It, it came into like our country struggled with that because of reduced trade with the U.S., and some of our banks were were investing in low in in the housing market in the United States, and they they lost a lot of money because of that as well. And then, in looking at China's real GDP growth, if you look at purchasing power parity, the green line, so the the PVP line, green line shows that the real GDP per person is a lot higher in China than if you use US dollars at market exchange rate. So yeah, purchasing power parity is a lot better of a metric for that. And then the use of and limitations of real GDP. Real GDP as a measure of economic well-being is flawed for the following reasons. So real GDP does not include factors that increase economic well-being. So it doesn't include household production. So a big problem with that is a big problem with, with real GDP. Real GDP doesn't include like housework, uh, taking care of children. Uh, like, so it doesn't, which it should, because all of these services have a very high value and they should be accounted for. Yeah, the problem is uh, real GDP doesn't, doesn't account for that and it should because there's a big value to it like a very significant value that's not accounted for in our our methods of counting so they need to that's something that they need to adjust for because there's a lot of stuff done in the household and like at every like yard etc gardening all that kind of stuff like that should be included but underground economic activity is not included so anything that relates to so underground economic activity underground economic activity is not included. So like, uh, for example, like there's a lot of underground ac economic activity ha that happens in terms of like illegal trades, like buying and selling banned substances, criminal, like criminal dealing that's not that's not accounted for. And there's a huge, there's there's hundreds of billions of dollars not accounted for in the Canadian economy based on underground economic activity. Health, health's not accounted for. So like if, if you have a higher life expectancy because of some medical breakthrough that's not accounted for, which is, it should be accounted for. Leisure's not accounted for, like going to, going skiing, having fun, like going on a trip that's not accounted for. Political freedom is not accounted for. Freedom of speech is not accounted for. The 
ability to vote is not accounted for. Social justice isn't accounted for. Like um, advancements in in civil rights are not accounted for, and they should all be accounted for. And then real GDP does not include factors that lower economic well-being, pollution. It should include that because that would lower real GDP because there's a lot of bad health outcomes that happen with that. People can get asthma and a lot of other respiratory issues with pollution. So human development index is a better measure of economic well-being. So they use the human development index with the UN. So that's human development index would be a good you good way to see how our economy is doing so here the human development index this is a good measure of how how our quality of life is so you see qatar united states norway australia canada they're all near the top of the human development index here so here, the so the real GDP person is on on the x-axis, and it shows that there's a strong there is there is a strong positive correlation with human development index and real GDP per per person. So that there's a real strong positive correlation with that, uh, except for Equatorial Guinea. Like that's 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 now that's what they call an outlier, outlier, where the where they are not where the human development index is not strongly correlated. with GDP per person. But that's an outlier. But yeah, as this shows, real GDP per person is a pretty good measure of human development index. But human development index is better. Like if you want to look at how a, co a country is in terms of living there, human development index is probably one of the best metrics. So that... So we'll go through uh, some activities in terms of GDP practice here. I'm going to share my screen. So. So nominal GDP measures the value of goods and services produced and the actual amounts of the transaction recorded. Then real GDP, it shows the effects of inflation. So what's, what's the nominal GDP growth rate in 2018 uh, based on, I'll, I'll just, I'll show you the equation to use to start. So for 2018 nominal GDP growth rate in 2018 equals nominal GDP 2018 minus nominal GDP 2017 divided by nominal GDP 2017 times 100%. So if you use that formula, what would be the nominal GDP growth rate for that time period? Does uh, Alexandra want to try? Yeah, sure. I'm. Uh, I can. Uh do it together so uh, we will subtract 110 million and yeah. we'll, uh, 100 million so we will have 10 million and then that 10 million should be divided by 100 million so it will be one tenth of a million multiplied by 100 percent. it is 10 percent. excellent perfect great job alexandra that was great that's exactly how you do it and then 20 
a uh, great job with Alexandra. And then 2019, it's the same thing, but different numbers. So does Ashley want to try this one? Sure. So again, we have 10 million on the top divided by 110 million this time times yes. 100 is basically 9.1%. Excellent. Great job. So you said 9.1%? Yeah. 9.09. Oh, nine. Okay. Excellent. Perfect. So that was great. Thank you, Ashley. And then so to convert the 2018 and 2019 nominal GDP figures into real GDP, we must deflate the nominal GDP, eliminate changes that occur simply because prices increase. So in this case, we take the nominal GDP divided by one plus the inflation rate. So for 2018, the nominal GDP is 110 million. And then we got our inflation rate is 10%. So we have to use this formula to calculate real GDP. So this is the real GDP formula. So I'll ask, does Didier want to try this one? Do you use the percentage one or like the inflation rate? Do you use like the 10%? Yes, yes. yes. Exactly. Okay. Um, so it will be 110 yep. million yep. Uh, over one plus 10%. Um, yes. Which is, let me do this real quick. 100. Yes, exactly. 100 million. Great job. Million. Great job. Great job. Oh, yeah. Like um, here, all we have to do for this. Like we can we can keep it in these uh like you know numbers like this. All we yeah. have to do all we have to do above is say like asterisk. All numbers are in millions. So that's all you have to do. Like uh every just do that and then you're you're set. So great job, did your thank you for doing that. No and then and then here the so there. There was no actual increase in the production of goods and services in 2018. It was just based on price. Yeah, like the price increased. And that's why nominal GDP increased. So then calculate the total inflation that occurred between 2017 and 2019, and then convert 2019 nominal GDP into 2017 dollars. So let's calculate the total inflation from 2017 to 2019. So you would take, you would take the, so you would add up the percentages here. Wait, so, so you would just, you just add up these percentages actually, yeah. Would you also be able to find the, um, the nominal GDP growth rate, like we did in those questions, just use 2017 numbers and 2019 numbers and get the same answer? Yes, yes, exactly. So yeah, here the total inflation, we, so the total inflation here, 20%. We add up both inflation 10% plus 10% equals 20%. And then we can convert 2019 nominal GDP into $2017. So does somebody want to calculate that with the real GDP formula here? I can try. Sure, sure. Uh, so the so we will need to calculate 2019 as the uh, nominal GDP and then convert it to 2017 or yes is, yeah okay yes. so we will take 120 yep. divided by um 1.1 1 .1 and uh, 120 divided by 1.1 1 .1 and uh sorry I will need to open my calculator because my brain doesn't work. Sure, no problem. <laughs> uh, 
Um, hundred and twenty divided one hundred and twenty divided by one point one. So it will be one zero nine point one. Okay. And then oh, just six, sorry. And then this is one zero nine point one million. And uh, after that, this is the 2019 rate. To convert it, we have to divide by the inflation rate, right? Because of the inflation, it's vice versa. So it will be 0.8 of the total cost. So multiplied by 0.8 is um, 109.1 multiplied by 0 0.8 equals to 87.28. That is not what I did and not what I got. So I don't know. Mm. Uh, so good try. I th So for this, the, so for this. Should we just multiply 0 0.8 to 120 million? Where are you getting 0 0.8 from? Because the inflation is 20% and to account for it, to to reconvert it to 2017, we have to subtract inflation. That's how I understood it, but I may be wrong. What I did was I found the inflation was 20%. And then I just used that equation we just did. So I put the 120 because that's the 2019 um, no meal GDP and then put it over the one plus 20%. So 1.2 and you get the hundred million again. Yes, yes. So good try, Alexandra. Ashley um, did it correct. Like, yeah, Ashley got it. Uh, but yeah, good, good try, uh, Alexandra, on that. Uh, so 120 million, 120 million divided by one plus the 0 0.2, and then you just get 100 million. So based on that, how much did the real GDP change between 2017 and 2019? It didn't. Good, good answer. Yeah, no change. It was all due to inflation. Yeah, so great, great work on that. That was great. So then uh, the 2019's real GDP expressed in 2017 do constant dollars reveals that. There was no GDP growth? Yes. There was no real GP growth. Great job. And then 2019's nominal GDP converted to 2018 dollars is uh, what would it be? Sorry, can you say that again? So uh, 2019's uh, 2019's nominal GDP converted to. 2018 dollars is what? So do we have to use the same formula and just do nominal GDP divided by the inflation rate plus one? Yes. Okay. So it will be 120 divided by 1.1? Yes. So it will be 109 million? Yes. And the reason why it's not exactly uh, the reason why it's not exactly 110 million is because because this is exact. And what we did here is like we usually this is approximation right here. Getting this is an approximation. It's still correct, but it's approximation while this is exact, but both are correct. Yeah, both are correct. Yeah, they, they do some, uh, they, they can calculate it either exact or approximately. You could do either. So, so good job on that worksheet, everyone. I will post this worksheet. So if you wanna redo it on your own time uh, and just, you know, and then, so, 
So I think, yeah, well, there's actually a bit more. So there's an excerpt from a news article on Malaysia's nominal GDP growth in 2019. So the GDP of Malaysia increased by 4.3% last year from 4.7%. And if Malaysia's nominal GDP was 365.3 billion in 2019, which is a 4.3% increase in nominal GDP from 2018 to 2019, 2018 nominal GDP must be 350.5 billion. So how much is Malaysia's real GDP in 2019 if the inflation rate between 2018 and 2019 was 3%? So do we need to take 2019 divided by one plus 0 0.03? Yes, yeah, the GDP for, for 2019 and then divided by one plus three percent, yeah. I got 354.66. That's what I got as well. Okay. So you did the 365.3 divided by one plus 0 0.03, right? Yeah. Okay. And what did you get? 354.66. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, excellent. Great job. So great job, that, that's correct. Great job, everyone. Um, so then, uh, what if the inflation rate is 5%? I got 347.9 billion. Yeah, me too. Yeah, that's that's great. Great job. That's how you calculate real GDP. And then if if the real GDP increases by say five percent in a year, that means that there was a five percent increase in the quantity of goods and services produced. So that's just getting rid of. There's no price impact with that. It's all based on the amount of stuff we have. Basically, it's just based on stuff. Like it's not based on the price is going up which is very important because price increases are kind of, it's kind of imaginary to be honest like if if you say you're if you say the economy is growing and it's just because of price increases it look it's basically imaginary growth like nothing's really happening just uh you're paying ten dollars instead of five dollars for let's say going to mcdonald's right so it's imaginary like you're not getting more products you're just paying more and it's not, you're not, it, it looks like your economy is growing, but it's just because prices are going up. And that's kind of fiction. It's kind of like a fairy tale sort of. So the real GDP growth rate is a far more accurate measure of economic development growth than the nominal GDP growth rate. So great job, everyone. That was great. So I'll post this here on, on the page. And then we'll move on to the next activity here. So I'll put it under, put it under slides here. Wait, I'll, I'll add in module worksheets. Put that in. Mm -hmm. 
So I'll show you where it is now. Uh, it's just posted now. In the so it's under worksheets. I made a new a new folder. So go to worksheets. It's right there. I'll start posting the worksheets in here that we complete in class. So good job on that, everyone. So let's get to the next activity here. So here, the uh, if Geely Motors builds a new factory for 100 million RMB, what's the effect on GDP? Does Eleanor want to try? That would be um, like the category would be capital, right? Because now they have more space to build more car like more cars basically or whatever motors or whatever they're building yes so the effect on gdp would be that the gdp would go up because yeah. you're now making more products exactly okay. yeah so go up and then investment would increase because factories are part of investment that's great it'll know good job part of investment so that's great so then the government builds a new high-speed rail station for RMB 50 million. So Hannah, do you want to try doing that one? Um, I think it would also go up and it would be under the um, government expenditure expenditures. Yes, yes, exactly. So government expenditures government expenditures would go up. That's great. And the government pays yearly wages to workers of RMB 20 million. So does Juan want to try this one? Uh, the GDP will go up. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and it will be in the category of uh, aggregate income. Yes. Would uh, which which letters would it be under though? Oh, uh, why? No. Yeah. Oh, that that that's true. Uh, but which of these ones here? C I G X or M? I will say C. Close, so it would be, yeah, that would lead into it. So, like, government expenditures, government expenditures would increase, and because eighty percent of government spending is on salaries of government workers. Roughly. And then the government workers will spend that money on consumption eventually. So that, that's a good point, uh, Juan. So yeah, it, consumption would eventually go up. It would just be down, the like it would be just after a while. Like once they start spending that money, uh, consumption will go up. So it's like government spending goes up and then after maybe a few days, consumption expenditure goes up. So it kind of leads in there. Great job, Juan. And then Malika, do you want to try doing the next one? Consumers spend RMB 200 million at a mall in December. What would happen to uh, to GDP? Would it increase? I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, I thought it increased because I don't know. Oh, it's okay. 
So, so yeah, it would increase. So we'll go up in consumption expenditures. We'll go up. Good job, Leica. Yeah, they would go up because uh, these consumers are spending more on mall spending, on uh, products in a mall. Great job. And then, and then when Y uh, buys a new NIO for 200,000 RMB. So does Morgan want to try this one? Um, okay, now I'm confused because I thought the last one would go down. So I'm not sure. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm going to uh, take an educated guess if the GDP would go up. Yes. Okay. And then it would be C, like cons consumption expenditure. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Does it go up because you're putting that money back into the economy to circulate? Yes. Okay. Yes. So Justin buys a new BMW for our 150,000 RMB. Does Olivia want to try this one? I think it would go up and be the consumption. Yes. Excellent job, Olivia. Thank you. And then, and then, uh, Sophia, do you want to try the next one? Uh, Miguel buys a used car from his neighbor for RM two for twenty thousand. I would say go up, but I'm not sure because it's a used car, so its previous owner already contributed to the economy. So I'm I'm not sure. I would say it's go up and it's a, it's a consumption expenditure. So great point saying like uh, talking about the use that that the was a great point. So it would stay the same because uh, GDP only values final products and services when they are produced. Slash. So if, you're, if you're, somebody's going to buy like basically anything new, that would increase the GDP. But if it's yeah. something being resold, it wouldn't affect it. Agreed. Yeah, hundred okay. percent. Yeah. So yeah, that that's a uh, uh, good job, Morgan. On that was good articulation for that. And then great job, Sophia, identifying that used would be you know a question. That, that's great. And then well, when Motors makes catalytic converters, these are sold to car manufacturers to install cars. In 2019, where Renault Motors had sales of RM 10 million. So Zachary, do you wanna, uh, what would happen to GDP with this one? Um, I'm I'm not too sure. The I'm not sure what would happen if like a company buys something else from another company. I don't know if that, like what that would count as. Is it like as a, is it export money? I think export only counts when it's um to like the rest of the world and not that country. So like for this one, I think it would be part of the um consumption consumption expenditure. But it's a part of car. The catalytic converter okay. isn't the final product oh, that it's point, going yeah. to. That would be an investment, right? Because yeah. they're purchasing new cap capital. Maybe. Or because the catalytic converter itself is a product, but it's not the final product. Like if it was going to parts for cars, like for mechanics, then I would argue it's a final product. But if it's going to build brand new cars, then it's still like a piece. It's a material still. So isn't she or whatever, aren't they like investing into that car manufacturing company? So they'll make cars and then when they sell the cars, they'll get like a percentage. I don't know. I would say that it depends on the final sale of the car because that's not a final product. And I would agree with you guys on that. True. 
I think that yeah. the said if uh, the manufacturers of cars sold 10 million worth of cars, then we could have said that it goes up, but not in this case. I think because it's not a final product that it stays the same since the GDP doesn't calculate other stuff that's not the final products. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So great discussion on that. I like the discussion was great because we're looking at, you know, if it would be an intermediate or a final product. So yeah, uh, great job, all of you. So stay the same. Uh, because catalytic converters are an intermediate good needed to create to build the car they would not be included in gdp only the value of the car when it is produced would be included in GDP to avoid double counting. So great discussion, all of you. That was great. Like that, that's the type of discussion that uh that like you know for discussion boards and that kind of stuff. That's the type of discussion that you know is very useful. So then Great Wall Motors spends five million to make 100 cars. By December 31st, they have sold 60 of the cars for four million dollars. So what would happen to GDP with that one? Um, should it be X minus Y and the total will be negative? So it actually will contribute to reduce growth? I think it would still increase because you're looking at the products that are sold and you're not, or I don't think you would consider the, the unsold cars yet. But they spend they still could be sold in the future, but they're not importing and exporting the cars between countries. We're assuming this company is still in the same country that we're counting the GDP for. So we just look at the 60 cars as a positive. But they they spent five million and only sold for four million. So they're still out of million dollars. Yeah, but they haven't sold 40 of the cars yet. Yeah, that's what and I was. They trying could to. make up more than five, and the five million that they spent would have been on materials, which don't count yet, anyways. I think it doesn't matter if they even if they lose this one million, uh, people still made five million out of them, so that would contribute to the economic growth. The economy growth, yeah, that's true. So good discussion. Uh, the GDP would increase. But it, the so it would be in like it would be consumption spending would increase by four million because the consumer because consumers bought four million dollars worth of cars the five million wouldn't be included because it would be assumed to be an intermediate good that they spend on however if a part of the five million was spent on investment on machinery in factories, then that would be counted. However, that hasn't been hasn't been stated. So this one is a tricky one because we don't know. Like, it might have just been all spent on intermediate goods. So uh, then we would just have to say four million would be the increase. But there, it could be more complicated depending on yeah. So good discussion, everyone. And then Huawei completes an upgrade to the 5G computer network for a company in Korea for RMB 50 million. What would this, what would happen with GDP for this one?
Well, that's infrastructure, but if we assume that because we've brought in another country's name at this point, then it would be part of the um, exports, right? Yes. If it was for our own country, it would be part of investments? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So. So exports is to the positive. Yeah. I'm sorry, I thought that Huawei is a Korean company, no? Oh, uh, they are, they're located, they're from China. Oh, okay, sounds good. Yeah. So, so yeah, good job, it would be exports, and if it was domestic, it would be investment, so good job on that. So Goldbind plays, pays a daycare, 3,000 a month to provide care for his two children while he and his wife work. So what would happen with that? What would be the um, what would be the uh, change in GP? It doesn't count children here. I think you mentioned. Oh, so when I said that, it means uh, if it's if it's like a parent. Oh, that... staying at home, not getting not getting support. Okay, sounds good. Uh, so it will increase GDP because it goes to the public. <laughs> yes. And then what about? Um, what what would it be under consumption investment? It's a consumption, I'd say. Yes, exactly. So consumption would increase by three thousand months. Yeah, and then Zoe's mom babysits Zoe's two kids for free. That wouldn't be anything to change because it's a parent. Like they're not, no money's being transferred. Exactly. And then, exactly, good job. And then what with, and then what, Um. yeah, so like nothing would change. So GP would not change here. That's great, great job. And then Brian operates a motorcycle repair shop. In 2019, he bills customers for a total of RMB 2 million. Because he repairs an already made product, but he still provides a service. I don't know. Yeah, I, th I think it would be the service. That's yeah, probably an yes. consumption expenditure. Yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. The GDP would go up because repairs would be under consumption. So good job identifying that. Consumption would increase by 2 million. Good job on that, that's great. And then Brian repairs his neighbor's motorbike. The neighbor pays him RMB 2000 cash with no receipt given. That doesn't contribute to it? I would say there is no way to track these transactions. Yeah, it's like, yes. how did you call it? The one that is not, not illegal, but the one that is uh, you yeah. had a neighbor. Like under the table? Underground, yes, technically. Yes. So that 2000 so still goes into the economy and benefits the economy, but they can't count it as GDP because it's... They don't pay yeah. tax on it, too, technically. Because it's not yes. like a new product that's being sold. It's just like repairing a motorbike that's already been sold. So... So like it's impossible to track because the underground economy. So a lot of things go under the, are under the underground economy and they can't be tracked because it's all cash. Like if it's a lot, like all of it's in cash and you can't, it's hard to track cash transactions. So there's no, there's no trail for that. And uh, it would be under service consumption. So good job on that discussion. And then Robin's forestry products cuts down trees and sells the wood to different lumber mills and furniture manufacturers. 2019 sales were RM50 million. So the sales of uh, Robin's forestry or the manufacturing of um, furniture were 50 million. 
So I think here, I think. Our M doesn't stay for Robin's forestry. <laughs> yeah. If you consider the lumber mills though, oh, but I guess the lumber mill would turn it into the different size planks and stuff that you would buy. Yeah. Okay. So that's just intermediate at the moment. Yeah, exactly. Unless they, yeah, like it's, yeah, they probably, yeah, they'll probably turn it into something. So good job, everyone, on that sheet here. So we completed that and I'll put this on in in the uh, sheets, the, the worksheet folder. So I posted under the worksheet folder for everyone. So the next activity we'll do is I'll share my screen here. I'll zoom in so it's easier see. So here, the table one shows some of the items in country A's national account and product accounts 2008. So based on this, what's the country's GDP in 2008? So we can calculate it a few different ways. Like here, the it could be C plus I plus so so here we could add wages, salaries, wages plus. indirect taxes plus depreciation plus interest, rent, and profit. You add those up and then get the income approach, uh, get the income approach uh, GDP for that. Or we could do the consumption expenditure plus investment plus net export equals expenditure approach. So we could do either to determine the country A's GDP. So here, if somebody wants to try, you how get would different I, numbers for them though? Yeah, I think because I get uh, one thousand two hundred twenty for the expenditure approach and yes. fifteen eighty for the income approach. Okay.
never mind, sorry, I got that wrong. So I'll I'll bring up something. I'll bring up some other uh give me one second. So here. Okay, so let's let's work on this worksheet here, right here. Uh, th thanks for trying that. So here. I'll just bring up the other worksheet that we have. One second. So here, uh, this this example, it has the, there's a lot of, there's information including the, the palm oil and barrels are sold to the wholesaler for 40,000 RMB. These, the wholesaler sells the oil to the bottler for 60,000. The bottler, Bottles the oil and sells it to retailers for eighty thousand. Then marks it up and sells it to customers for one hundred twenty thousand. So we add up all the incomes in this case. So, so in this case, can somebody uh, add up all these numbers and let me know what you get for the uh, the calculation? Three hundred twenty-five thousand. Excellent. Just check. You got three hundred twenty-five thousand, right? Yeah. You got three hundred twenty-five thousand, right? Yes. Excellent. Perfect. Great job. Great job. So that so we'd add up all the all the uh, incomes here, like all the money spent, and then and then get three hundred twenty five thousand. So then, uh, what is the total expenditure by consumers? Uh, should be the expenditure be the GDP because it yeah. one of the ways to find is expenditure approach so it should be equal to 325,000 exactly yeah so in this case the uh yeah 100 percent great job the income so it, it does we can see that in an economy income equals expenditure so it has to balance out so in that case GDP equals like G GDP. So it's the same thing. So GDP but, is GDP income approach equals GDP expenditure approach. But oh, who was gonna say this? The um the consumers only spend 120,000 on the final product though. So in this case, th that's true, but they're uh, they're incorporating all expenditures, um, like the the consumers, and here everyone, like whoever. So everything, every transfer. So this transfer, this transfer, this transfer, this transfer. It's recorded as income for somebody. And recorded as an expenditure for somebody else. Okay. So like there's a one, like there's two parties in each transaction, right? So the wholesaler is the seller, the bottler is the buyer. So the bottler is is the making the expenditure. Or yeah, the exactly. Wholesaler. Okay. Exactly. So like one, so in um, so in all of these transactions, there is one consumer and one buyer that is why expenditure equals income because in every 
income generation scenario, you will have someone spending to for you to make an income. So like it, it always has to balance out because money doesn't come from nowhere. It has to have a source. But yeah, good question. Good question on that one, Ashley. So here, uh, GDP income approach equals GDP expenditure approach. And GDP is gross domestic product. And then that formula for calculating GDP, G plus C plus I plus X minus X minus M. And then G, G is government spending. C is consumption spending. I is investment spending. X is exports. M is imports. It's a great job, everyone, on that sheet. So, so I posted this link into uh, into course slides on on Brightspace. So it's under slides. So it'll be at the bottom of the slides there. And the expenditures approach we went through, it's Y equals C plus I plus G plus X minus M. And then consumption, investment, government spending, exports, imports. And then the income approach. This is the, uh, this is the equation of the income approach. So it's wages earned from labor plus interest earned on labor plus rent earned on land, plus profits earned on entrepreneurial talent. So that, that's, how, that's how you calculate it through income approach. And then both would equal. So those would be equal to each other. So I uh, wanted to show, and this is the link, I'll put it in the chat again. because we'll do some questions on this. So the next thing we'll do is some questions. So if you wanna pull that link up on your computer, just for the equation, if you, if you need it, uh, it'll, it's, uh, it's not like there. So I'll share the questions here. So the first question is the Frank Hegu Corporation began in 2018 with $15 million in capital. In 2018, the Frank Hegu company spent $400 million in inventory, $200 million in new capital, experienced 10% depreciation of its capital. Based on this information, what is the Frank Hegu's company's contribution to gross domestic product in 2018 and what categories is contribution counted? So. So we could add the and then also GDP expenditure approach equals consumption plus investment plus government spending plus exports minus imports. 
So where would all this spending go if they're spending $50 million in capital, $400 million in inventory, $200 million in new capital, and then experience 10% depreciation of its capital? What would uh, that what would that go under? Consumption, investment, uh, or a combination of two? I would say investment. Yes, yes, that that exactly. The so how much investment do you think they would have? Well, technically, well, technically capital will be also an investment because it's investment in labor, right? Yes. So uh, it will be approximately 600 million. Yes, yeah, the 400 million plus 200 million. Yeah, I, th I think you're correct on that. Yeah, so let's try that. Let's see if that's correct. That is correct. Great job. So the, the depreciation wouldn't be counted uh, on this. So don't. So for this, uh, that that's that's a good thing to know. They wouldn't count depreciation. So, uh, great job, great job on that one. So then, next question here. When using the expenditures approach, which category of gross domestic product GDP changes when domestic firms anticipate that a recession will occur soon? Wages. So, <laughs> so for the expenditure approach, the expenditure approach would have have consumption, net exports, government spending, investment. Uh, wages would be part of the income approach. Um, but good try, good try. So income approach, and then this would be here would be the expenditure. Approach. Wouldn't it be investment? Because if you're anticipating a recession, you might not buy as much, like hold more of your money because it's not going to be worth as much when the recession hits. I also have a uh, question with regards to like domestic companies. Do we assume that they also export stuff or only if it's mentioned in a question? Uh, good question. They, we assume they export things unless it's said otherwise. Okay. They may say it, it just operates in Canada. Like there are very few companies that operate 100% in Canada. One of them is Chapman's. Chapman's operates 100% in Canada, but that's the only one that, like one of the only companies that do. So it's it's very rare. So always assume that they export and import unless unless said uh, unless specifically said. But that's a good question. Yeah. So Angelica owns a factory. She must replace ten thousand dollars worth of equipment in the factory every year because it wears out. What is the term to describe when capital wears out? Depreciation. Yes, good job. Then according to the circular flow model, how is the GDP of a nation determined? It is determined by the expenditure approach. So the circular flow model had the households and firms. So isn't it E? I think so. that is about the expenditures. So by adding total revenues of firms of the total expenditures of the households. 
Yes, because all of these would equal each other in the circuit of flow because somebody has to be a buyer and somebody has to be a seller. So the uh, if one person's so in each transaction, there has to be a buyer and seller, and uh, both both of the amounts that they receive or 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 send have to equal. So you just have to calculate either, let's say the total household expenditures, total household income or total revenues, because all three will equal each other. So great job everyone on that, that was great. So I posted this on under slides in, in uh, Brightspace here for everyone. So what I'll do right now is I'm gonna introduce the assignment here. I'll introduce this. So let's change the name here. So here the 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 assignment starts today. You'll have until February second. And you're going to have to identify a major Canadian socioeconomic challenge and its impact on the Canadian economy. So write a short paper about 500 words about a current Canadian economic macro challenge, and then describe its potential impact on the Canadian economy. So focus on macro themes like such, such as consumption, government, investment, exports, international trade, employment, inflation, interest rates, ex economic sectors, industries, business, housing, etc. So use Issues like economic growth, inflation, taxation, unemployment rate, interest rates, aging population, financial crises and budgets, pollution, healthcare, and all those other issues that are stated. So anything that uh, is, is national, regional, or provincial, so that's macro. So anything that's like nationwide. And then look at macroeconomic tax uh, topics and summarize them in a concise, logical, and relevant manner. And use APA referencing. So make sure to do a citation list in APA and use in-text citations in APA. So do this same citation style that you use. All of you have, all of you use APA in your programs, right? Yes. Excellent. So yeah, just keep, just do what you do with APA and it'll be perfectly fine. So around 500 words in, in two double space printed pages. So use your own words. Yeah, that's very important. So use your own words and yeah, use your own words and yeah. And then these are some good resources for, for this project. You could do it on productivity issues in Canada labor supply and um like yeah so like demographic shifts you can do it on immigration policy you can do it on the oil pipeline you can do it on aging population the economic implications of that you could do it on the canadian job recovery you could do it on household debt and government debt in canada canada increasing business investment the debt in Canada, the risks to the Canadian economy, and the lower earnings in Alberta on earnings growth at the national level, carbon tax, education spending. You could choose any of these articles or you could find your own. Uh, it's totally up to you. If you like these articles or if you wanna find your own, that's perfectly fine. The four, hour, four day work week, the uh, labor I, markets yes i was wondering what type of resources because when i was scrolling down some of them are just websites and news uh articles can i use something like from fraser institute if i want to do economy macroeconomic effect of healthcare in canada yes yes you could use fraser institute you could use cd how you could okay. use yeah you could use cd how you could use fraser you could use Canadian Center for Policy Alternatives. Like, there's a lot of good sources, uh, for okay. sure. Okay. Uh, 
and just make sure it's a good source like anything from the fraser institute cd how cg any of those places those are good universities colleges all great sources government great sources just be careful some sources are skewed so make sure that uh, but those sources that the source you just mentioned is a good source then yeah so these are a lot of ideas here but yeah make sure that you have a bmo capital markets is a great source fraser institute uh, mclean's yeah so those are good resources that you could use for this so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna post this updated link here so are we just describing what the issue is or making predictions or relating to like the pandemic and recent events? Good question. So with this, with, with this, I want you to, you can make predictions that that would actually, that would be a lot that'd be a lot like I'd, I'd prefer if you did make predictions if you, it just the if you can uh like analyze the material from the article and then give your 